Well, I've just been wandering up and down the aisle going, this is so cool. <laughs> I can see your faces, and I don't have that plastic shield between me and thee, and it's, it's just, ha, huh, it's so nice. Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Vicki. I'm the interim pastor here. I'd like to welcome not only those who are in person, but those who are live streaming with us. Welcome. Uh, and I guess those who will view the recording later. We, we are all welcome in this place of worship. Um, I don't know how many of you are science geeks, but I am. And I heard that the Voyager had just passed into the space in between solar systems which is just so cool. It's been out there for 40, 44 years? Yes, 44 years. It's over 14 billion miles away from Earth, which somebody in the 9 o'clock service told me was, I guess a fellow science geek, 0.24 light years. Something in that order. So that's, to me, that's just so exciting. And what's also exciting is that its Voyager has sent back the sound of what that space is like. And it's like a gentle hum, and a little bit like the patter of rain. And, he sa and uh, an astronomy professor at Cornell, who I guess has heard this, said the interstellar medium is like a quieter, gentle rain. In the case of a solar outburst, it's like detecting a lightning burst in a thunderstorm and then it's back to a gentle rain. That is just, God's creation is just so amazing and, and awesome that I, I just have a hard time comprehending it. Um, but back to earth. <laughs> we, we have our semi-annual meeting after worship today. So if after worship you would get up, maybe stretch your legs a little bit, go on back and sign in to the um, semi-annual meeting, that would be helpful. Uh, we, we're pretty sure we're going to have a quorum between the in-person and online uh, registrations. So we will be able, we should be able to actually conduct business. And there is, there are a few items of business to conduct. Um, that is about all I had, other than to note that because of the uh, relaxing of restrictions, not only are we able to worship without masks on, but we don't have to wait for the ushers to dismiss by rows. So that would be kind of nice to be able to turn around and talk to the person behind you or three rows back that you just realized was here or something along that line. So we are, we are grateful for the science that is, has allowed us to, to gather. So now, let us compose ourselves for worship.
And now let us rise as we're comfortably able and join in the call to worship. Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you, and I will come again. We gather in this place to know your presence and your love, now and always. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the light. If you know me, you know God. Jesus said, believe in me and follow me. And we join in welcoming the Holy Spirit among us in worship. God of wisdom, we give you thanks for claiming us and for all the ways you work through us in the world. We give you thanks for the ways in which your word continues. On your best days, we feel the joy of your work completed in us. On our worst days, we know you are still there. Be with us in our worship today as we give you thanks for the miracle of being human and being alive, for the miracle of learning and growing into love for all of your creation. Amen. Please be seated.
And as nice as that sounded in the recording, we can look forward to hearing that live. <laughs> Our gospel reading this morning is from John's gospel, chapter 17, verses 6 through 19. I'm using the message translation this morning. I spelled out your character in detail to the men and women you gave me, said Jesus. They were yours in the first place, and then you gave them to me, and they have now done what you said. They know now, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that everything you gave me is firsthand from you. For the message you gave me, I gave them, and they took it and were convinced that I came from you. They believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the God-rejecting world, but for those you gave me, for they are yours by right. Everything mine is yours, and yours mine, and my life is on display in them, for I'm no longer going to be visible to the world. They'll continue in the world while I return to you. Holy Father, guard them as they pursue this life that you conferred as a gift to me so they can be one heart and mind, as we are one heart and mind. As long as I was with them, I guarded them in the pursuit of the life you gave through me. I even posted a night watch, and not one of them got away, except for the rebel bent on destruction. So my people can experience my joy comp completed in them, I gave them your word, and the godless world hated them because of it. Because they didn't join the world's ways, just as I did not join the world's ways, I'm not asking that you take them out of the world. I'm asking that you guard them from the evil one. They are no more defined by the world than I am defined by the world. Make them holy consecrated with the truth. Your word is consecrating truth. In the same way that you gave me a mission in the world, I give them a mission in the world. I'm consecrating myself for their sakes, so they will be truth consecrated in their mission. Well, that is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This year, this year you may be looking forward to when you can finally get away. Finally, away from the place that we've been hunkered down in since last March. Away from the sameness of it all. Just, just away. I know I am. My beloved is our travel planner, and he has been planning a trip in September since we got word that a vaccine was going to become available soon. He has been so anxious to plan a trip. And we all are looking forward to getting a break, even if that break is being able to sit in a pew without masks on and to be able to sing without our voices sounding just that little bit muffled. And as you can probably tell, advertisers, travel agents, the entire tourist industry are ramping up. Their ads are showing beaches, luxurious cruise ships, glorious sunsets, and destinations that promise that no matter where we go, it won't be like home. It won't have the pressures, the anxieties, the complicated relationships, the walls that are part and parcel of our homes. Life, life will be easy. Well, okay, we know life doesn't work that way. There are some of us who end up working harder than ever since there are some jobs that depend on warmer weather. I think of the saying, make hay while the sun shines. Then there's the fact that for me, at least, I'm always kind of glad to get home. 
Sure, there's laundry and there's grocery shopping and there's all the little stuff that you have to do to welcome yourself back into your home. But if it's, a been, a, if it's been a good trip, I've brought something back with me. I've brought something back that fed my soul. The journey of faith is like that. Well, except for the glitzy ads. And of course, there is no promise that life is going to be easy because we know that life does not work that way. We come here on Sunday morning for the same reason that the folks in John's congregation came. We want to hear a word that helps us align our faith with our life, with how things are going outside of these walls. Religious faith has inspired some to escape whether to monasteries or convents or communal life centers, places that kind of promise that the world will not impinge on forming a more faithful life. However, it's inspired others to go out and share the news with the world. The gospel, the gospel writer's congregation, John's congregation, would certainly have felt that need to escape. Things were tense, to say the least, in Jerusalem around 100 years after Jesus' crucifixion. The temple had been destroyed, the Romans were firmly in charge, and those who followed Jesus' way had been evicted from their home synagogues. This would seem to be a good time to retreat from the public eye. And when we look at today's news, it might also feel like a good time to retreat, whether it's on vacation or in our homes or just in our souls. India is in the grip of a COVID pandemic like we did not even see here. Israel and Palestine's endless war is reigniting. We can go maskless, but it depends on us being vaccinated. And it doesn't really take into account that younger population who can't receive the vaccine yet. So there are very real reasons for anxiety. But this is when Jesus doubles down, which makes now a good time to recall that prayer for his disciples and for us as we follow him. If we listen closely, this is really very sweet traveling music. The themes of Jesus' ministry are all there. Jesus told the disciples about God's character, and they believed. Jesus guarded them as a shepherd does, posting a night watch, and only one got away. We even hear an echo of the Lord's Prayer as Jesus asks God to guard them from the evil one. Sent, continue, pursue mission. These are moving on words. Words that tell us that we're not intended to sit on the sidelines even if the world hates the truth. The truth that is firsthand from God. That God is a God of love who commands us to truly love our neighbor. This is the drumbeat of scripture, my friends. This is the traveling music. And in this ever more closely connected world, it's hard to love a neighbor that's a continent away. And sometimes it's hard to love the neighbor who's right across our fence. But we are called to love them anyway. We also hear the truth that we are supposed to live in the world and participate in it. And yet we are not supposed to allow ourselves to be defined by it. And that, that is probably the hardest one of all. As we think about how easy it is to fall into the trap of living into someone else's image of what we should be, or going along with the group because we think we might need their approval. We hear the truth that the world believes in scarcity rather than abundance. And that makes it hard to believe that a rising tide lifts all boats, rather than believe that some boats need to be put down in order for ours to rise. 
And this is what happens to the rebel who is bent on destruction, Judas, who got away even though Jesus posted that night guard. Judas, who refused to hear that sweet traveling music that Jesus was playing because the risk was just too great. None of the Gospels tell us why Judas betrayed Jesus. We're left to try to figure that out on our own. Maybe, maybe it was for the money, but I'm not, I don't really think so. That thread does run through the Gospels, though, as Jesus talks about money a lot. Judas was the treasurer. He objected to the amount of money that was spent on the oil that anointed Jesus' feet. And he did take those 30 pieces of silver that he was offered. So maybe he did buy into the fear of scarcity and the need for financial security. And just a sidebar here, it's okay to worry about financial security, but it's not okay to obsess about it. Maybe Judas felt the fear of the crowds, and maybe he realized that Jesus was not that warrior Messiah that the zealots were hoping for. Or perhaps, just maybe, it was fear. We all fear something, and the risk of confronting those fears is all too real. We may have to change our minds, or we may have to confront someone in an uncomfortable situation. And Jesus, we hear that Jesus prays for his remaining disciples, those who have changed their minds. Matthew, the tax collector, and Simon, the zealot, come to mind. So, as we embark on whatever we end up doing this summer, as we take a break for our normal routine, let's remember the risks. The risks of going somewhere we've never been and meeting people who live lives different from ours. The risk of change. The risk that even if we stay at home, Jesus really does call us to something different with his traveling music, his invitation for us to journey with him. And let's also remember that he prays for us. He prays, I'm not asking that you take them out of the world, but protect them from the evil one. The evil one, temptation, is all around us, and fear is the weapon of choice. Fear of not having enough, of our neighbor, of illness, and even of death. These are all very real. And Jesus prays that we will not succumb to them. That God will guard our actions and our thoughts so that we can hear the music, that wonderful invitation to journey without fear, in wonder and in awe at God's amazing creation in us and in the universe. Amen.
this Sunday, even as we talk about journeying outside the walls and what that journey might mean, we have the opportunity to bless the work of several members of the congregation who have made these wonderful prayer shawls to be distributed to people who need them. Let us pray. From small seeds come great trees with vast branches that offer covering and comfort to God's creatures. Thanks be to God, whose spirit has nurtured this growth. Bless these shawls. May they be a blessing to those who receive them. When they feel the warmth surround them, may they feel the warmth of those who made them with caring hands and hearts. When they fall asleep in comfort, may they feel the peace of the Holy Spirit surround them. Gracious God, we are filled with gratitude for your loving work among us. We are filled with gratitude for loving hands that create these tangible signs of your care for your children. By your spirit, continue to equip your servants that they may continue to share your love with others so freely. Continue to nurture and bless this ministry in the years to come as the years pass, that many more may experience the shelter of your care through the prayer shawls of St. Lucas UCC. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus gave us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we have blessed the tangible gifts of those who crocheted or knitted these wonderful shawls, let us also bless the tangible gifts that we give of ourselves. We have tasted of the Lord's goodness. Help us to be living vessels of God's sweet, sweet spirit, offering ourselves, our lives, and our gifts to those who are most in need of Christ's healing mercy. God, bless these offerings, that they may heal and make whole the lives of all your children. And bless those who give and those who long to give, that we may become living stones of mercy, grace, and justice in the house of your creation. Amen. Please rise as you're comfortably able.
There was a line in the second hymn we sang that is just one of my favorites of all time. The potentate of time. I love that line. God and Jesus, Holy Spirit, are the potentates of time. They are the potentates of our universe. And they, they're even interested in our individual selves. This is the wonder of God's message. And we carry that forward with us. That Jesus prayed for us. Jesus prayed for us then and Jesus prays for us now. Let us continue that work in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated.